what's happening everyone we are live it is friday hope you're having a good long weekend out there if you're taking one or if you're working out there and listening to us on the mobile that's cool too hope to be a fun infotaining show today got a couple gentlemen with me it's a it's a vegas reunion it's a a, a mini one a mini one at least we were on dccs and uh charlie stream back in uh in vegas a few weeks ago back when it all just started getting better when it was simpler times when things were when things were green and uh, everyone was just, e-hex is fine and all that stuff. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I'll get to chat in just a moment. I want to get these guys in until we get started. Uh, welcome back to the show, Hexy Bastard and Cultivate Crypto. Charlie, how's it going, gents? Hey, it's going good. How are you? It's the fastest intro I could do. You know, I tried to, tried to get you guys in because <laughs> we've been in the green room game planning. We had a lot of good content, actually. I'm glad I was recording that in the green room, too. Man, I'll post it up later. <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. Uh, <laughs> yeah. what, what do you mean? You have nothing to hide? No. Um, yeah. What do you, so you guys like freedom. Well, freedom. <laughs> um, we're selling all our bags right now. <laughs> yeah, that's what we we're talking about. We we're like, we, we got to get out of this place. It's, it's not it's some not fucker good. is some fuckers selling everything right now. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's a great point you make there. Let me let me put that on the screen. Hold on. There is a there is a gentleman or a gentle person or uh, otherwise that uh, did take a big dump on the price today i think let's see which one somebody was talking about yeah so a uh, big account sells 48 billion pls in one go exiting three million dollars wow um is that what, what do you think they're gonna spend three million dollars on ethereum meme coins yeah. tokens going back to vegas what do you think nine inches nine, i don't nine know inches. man I, I don't know. Like, I mean, that's a lot to be selling in one in one clip. I wish they knew about the DCA tool available on Nine Inch.io, where they could have took zero slippage and <laughs> doing all thing? of that. Is that a, how does that work? How does that work? So you can just set you just set orders up to um you can you can do it like based on time or based on price. It's a little bit like limit orders, but you can also DCA in and out of stuff. Like you can set orders to come out every day, every week, certain times, certain price points. It's just a really really cool tool which we basically stole from Solana. It's one of the best features available on Solana right now. Um, so yeah, it's it's really really cool tool, and it actually prompts you as well when you're doing a large trade. If you're taking more than like five percent slippage on nine inch, then it will prompt you to use this tool instead. So uh, yeah, it's it's a fantastic, um, fantastic little thing that we've added there. And uh, shout out to Kino and the and the other devs for making it possibility. It's, uh, so does that, cool. that work like basically because it's riding through a bunch of different stuff? That's how it uh, gets cheaper. Like how does that basically reduce the slippage like on a technical level? It, it reduces the slippage because um, you're splitting your order up across like a time frame or. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, so so I mean, for example, you can set it to come out every block or every uh, every minute or every hour or every day or or whatever, and it's it's actually going to be a very useful tool for cashing out late. So it's great for cash uh, for buying into stuff like if it's because a lot of the meme coins on nine inch are very low liquidity, so you're gonna take. I mean, even buying like a hundred bucks worth, sometimes you're taking like ten percent, twenty percent slippage, which is shit, obviously. But uh, if you and use the escape tool. Point. You can do a few dollars every every 10 minutes or something like that if you want to. And then it will get, give you the best price execution. You can also set it for a certain price range. So it'll only, so it's a little bit like a limit order. It'll only activate the, the DCA once the price falls into an area that you're, that you're, uh, happy to buy at so um obviously you guys must have heard about solid x that had a big dip recently yeah. i know a few guys that watched my stream and looked at the fibonacci levels that i drew and just set dca between the uh 786 and the 618 and mm. they got their entire order filled at that perfect range and they didn't even have to sit at their computer and do it so that's quite nice yeah well, what's the difference mechanics between the limit order because you got limit you got exchange limit and dca it's just is it using limit orders just in a time frame is that how you think about it that's a good question i think i think it, it depends um on the type of order that you're that you're doing but um i think it does just do market orders uh as as standard um yeah. it's it's a little bit comparable to like v3 liquidity in in a way it's not exactly the same but it's it's uh similar because it'll just execute when you're in a range or, but yeah, it will be, I'm pretty sure it's market buys like the whole time. So uh, and, and like on Solana, is that on like uh, radium, Orca, Jupiter? I mean, I have no idea. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> no, I've answer. never actually where, used Solana. Where it was taken from. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I mean, yeah, I've just, uh, what do you call it? I made a good chunk on Solana in the last bull market or whatever. And then I just kept a bunch of stuff on chain there. So it's, it's kind of fun to fuck around with and just kind of see, you know, what's what's building in crypto because at the moment right i mean 
Pulse Chain needs money to get rotated to it eventually, right? Needs new people to come into it. But right now, obviously, Ethereum was had, was mainly that, you know, the last two cycles. But now um, it's like the money's now rotating basically into Solana and Base. Um, but there's only shit except for like Aerodrome on Base and uh, maybe one meme coin like Brett, right? So like, I think there's way more going on on Pulse Chain, which is why it's like, okay, by the time crypto finally realizes that, right? Like what we're building over here, then I think like price is gonna explode, everything's gonna go well, but it's, I don't, I don't know how that's gonna happen, right? Because it's like obvious that other chains are gonna, you know, get first dibs on, on liquidity. It's, it's difficult, man, because the crowd is so different from like the Richard Hart style crowd. Yeah. Like the Solana guys are real degens, like ridiculous degens. And um, we do have a lot of those types on Pulse Chain, but it's it's difficult to get those guys over. Now, I think as a, like as a community, as a concerted effort, like all the builders, all the all the um, influencers, things like that, we really need to target these Solana guys because yeah. they are just there's so many of them. And if we can even attract like ten percent of those guys over, it's going to have a huge net worth work effect for us. I really wanted to launch nine inch on Solana to try and get those guys over, but it's not that simple. It's, yeah. it's not a basic EVM chain that you'd have to rewrite almost all the code, get everything um, audited <laughs> again, all of this stuff. So if we could have done it within like a couple of weeks of when we had the idea, then we would have probably already done it, but it's yeah. something that's going to take months to do. And by the time we get around to actually launching on there, maybe the Solana run is over and no one cares about it anymore. No, nope. I, I don't think that's going to be the case. I think Solana is basically, <clears throat> gonna be and this is just a theory of course right but like um i think not it's financial based, advice <laughs> yeah not financial <laughs> advice, but i think it's taking ethereum's place kind of like how ethereum took bitcoin's place in terms of where are you going to get the most gains for the least amount of risk right and so um i just think it's like there's so much money going over there because the vcs right have money to pay for advertising to get word out Really, I mean, they, the rich people basically are like, okay, we're going to back this chain, even though the tech is pretty much shit, <laughs> you know, and it goes down all the time or you can't get your transactions through. So. Only 11 times, Charlie. What are you talking about, man? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it <laughs> only had, 11 uh, times. <laughs> it had 100% it had uptime for like 11 months, I think, <laughs> at one point. So <laughs> that's a numerology right there. I like it. Yeah, there you I, go. I don't know what we're talking about. You talk about, you know, the ecosystem price to be down. That's, you just look at short term time frame, 24 hours. You click one of these buttons. 30, oh, shit. 30. Okay. Which one? Which one gives me green? Which one? Nine, okay. 90, maybe. 90. Oh, okay. All time. Well, let's talk about that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm running out of, I'm running out of green right now. Right? I'm running out of green. It, it does but, suck, man, because whoever did this, uh, this big dump on Pulse has really ruined the potential pattern that could have played out. Uh, Cause it was like an inverted yes. head and shoulders and there, and it's he's ruined it like <laughs> dude, it's still a, technically there but like oh if it goes any lower then we've completely dude, there's, ruined a, that. there's a bunch of shit there is a so such a nice clean five wave sequence going on all that needed to happen right was that we didn't cross price that we had at the end of last year and which we just did today um and we and basically then just pump up to uh previous all-time highs like you know i know it's a chore but because you got a lot of sellers and a lot of futters but um if it would just held that level and then just long and like if there were just a whale like if there was a benevolent whale that would have came in and said i'm just gonna buy this up to keep price kind of just going sideways here until basically you know this time next month when a lot of liquidity is going to be just pumping into crypto or it's starting to do so um then you know you'd have that nice pattern you go up to previous all-time highs you chill a little bit and then you know rocket this ship to the moon but now i do think that we are gonna uh probably chop in the ranges that we've been in already for quite a while here it might even lag other chains for the beginning of the summer unfortunately as a downer it's, i mean it's not a fun thing we run you know, our but... way up man and it's just gonna grind sideways for Okay, ages now and i'm just what? like oh man what it, it does give people time like if people actually you know are like okay well i don't have maybe a lot of dry powder right now but i have a good job where maybe sometime in early summer or midsummer or whatever i'm getting a bonus like for those people who really like have their thesis on pulse chain or hodlers just want to buy more but you know need to basically bring in capital slowly for them, it's an amazing opportunity, I think, which is mo should be most people actually. But 
you know, I hope people are okay continuing to add to bags and not, you know, and just bit by bit, right? But I, I think there's so much fud out there. We got a lot of people who are just like, you know, I'm just going to go and dollar cost average into something else. And I'm just like, and that's what the $3 million is about, I think, you know, because it's probably not the guy's whole bag if we looked at the wallet, I would guess. But I don't know. It's oh, just yeah. not. Hasn't that guy fun. been dumping hex and pulse and everything just consistently for a very long time now? Um, I haven't yeah. actually checked his wallet, but um, I heard some people talking about it that this this guy has been like a thorn in hex since way back when. And the same guy, it's a bit like that D01 guy. Uh, he he was one, wasn't he? He just like completely wrecked the chart. Every time Godwell bought, he would just like dump it straight away. <laughs> he's just the, the the worst guy in the hex community. Like whoever he is, he's just uh, I don't know, man. He was he's not a very nice player, and he's taken mm. more slippage. Like again, these these big guys really ought to just be doing. I mean, maybe they're not aware that you can do limit orders on on Pulse Chain. Maybe they're not aware that you well, can do three liquidity. Maybe they just want to see the world burn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah no like i don't know we always say think people that have money are smart we call them smart money but they're the same as everybody fucking else nope so a lot, a lot of these guys got rich from crypto so they have not like and I, i'm probably one of these guys myself but like yeah i'm too <laughs> <laughs> you get rich in crypto <clears throat> and you think that you're just like a genius because you did it but in reality it's that bell curve thing it's like the really dumb and the really smart guys <laughs> yeah, we're, we're probably we're in the really all, dumb category. All, yeah, we're all crazy enough and dumb enough to get in this industry in the first place and stay in it, right? Yeah. And but it's amazing I mean, when you do make some money, like you just you just don't want to do anything else. I only know one yeah. guy in the world who made money in crypto who's like, Yeah, fuck crypto, I'm not doing it anymore. Literally one. <laughs> well, and there's people, right? I, like I think usually people in their first cycle, they get a little tired of the volatility and they're like, man. That was like that first four years was like kind of a chore, right? And so then I always see there's some sentiment by people that are like, I can't wait to get out of crypto with my bags and I don't have to deal with this bullshit anymore. I have to don't deal with this tribalism, this infighting, all this stuff. And I'm just like, I don't know, like maybe I've gotten over that hump a while back, but like it's one of those things where I'm just like, man, like this is going to be the most exciting industry for the rest of our goddamn lives, right? For the rest of this century. So like, why would we want to be anywhere else? Like the only other place that's going to have is like crazy gains, right? Is quantum computing and AI, but like you can do, you can use those in crypto too. So like AI crypto with ASI coming out here, I think in like late April shit, bro, that's like going to be the Bitcoin of AI coins. So like, you know, just, I don't know. Crypto is so exciting. Cause like, it's just merging with so many different technologies and stuff too. And, Take it over I, need the world. To, I need to join the Citadel, mate, because like I don't even know about half of this stuff that you're talking about right now. So dude, you gotta look into ASI. So just trust me. Like, if you buy that coin, sell it at the top of the bull market, accumulate it at the bottom of the bear. For me, it's the only merger between crypto and AI that's actually uh what do you call it? Um has staying power. Like basically, mm. they're taking three powerhouses. Uh, I, I've been saying this since last September where there's three coins that were only any good in the um, AI space, which were uh, Fetch, AGIX, and Render protocol. And AGIX and Fetch plus Ocean are the three that combine to make this ASI. So if they continue the project through the, through the next bear market and are successful, they're going to be like the Bitcoin of AI coins. So like, you know, the one that you can buy and hold forever, or you can sell it at the top of the market, accumulate it in the bear, and then hold that forever on a trades or whatever, you know? So. Yeah. At least so that's if, you wanna, if you want to learn uh, AI without the to not, tokenomics part, without the getting rich part, if you just want to learn AI, go real DeFi, learn to earn, click AI with that little metal muscle. I did a, a free training for crypto, like how to use AI for crypto stuff, like creating, you know, hex promo videos, like and how to create a website for Pulse Chain, like five minutes, and how to do coding when you don't know how to code, and like and then going through like a different tokenomics with different AI stuff too, trying to drill into that, but. Yeah, go real DeFi, learn to earn, click AI, and I got a got a five last or the week before. Yeah, the week before I did everyday stream. Uh, they're covering different stuff. So FYI on AI stuff. That's um, awesome. I'm, I'm gonna check that out because I, I want to learn how to. In, I don't really do anything with AI, AI at the moment. I really want to uh, integrate that stuff in. You got to. You got to. Yeah. It's it's, it's like, a game changer. It's not going away. It can only make you more powerful at this point. And you thought you were early in crypto. Boy, we are early in AI. It's, yeah. It's <laughs> Um, just had a note here from Alan, <laughs> that avatar, I almost choked when I saw it. I don't know if you guys recognize it from uh, Dave Chappelle show. 
that's amazing, amazing, funny character. Um, <laughs> yes, yes. I was like, I haven't seen that face in so long. <laughs> Cracks me up. The, um, the, best, the best parts at the end where he takes he takes off the hat that just everybody's heads explodes. Like, yes, like, oh, yes, dude. That they'll never make another show like that. That's oh that's no, no, fantastic. Like uh, that's why he, he technically got canceled, right? <laughs> yeah, that was a that was a, yeah. The, that was a thing back then. Anyways, <laughs> uh, it will live in infamy. All those episodes and all those characters and Charlie Murphy and all that stuff too. Uh, yep. That wallet still holds 1.7 bill PLS 150 million uh, PLSX. Not much left. Okay, yeah. So just yeah, it's not it's not a lot. That the market can eat that up very very easily. Um, I just I just want to see over the next day or two like a big bounce back into the range that it was in before. If we see that, then then we'll do all right. But if we don't see that, it, I just feel like it's going to be side, sideways or even down for a while. Which yeah. sucks, man. Because we were just making such a beautiful chart pattern. I was looking at Pulse. I was like, "Fucking, I'm so glad that my bags are packed on this one." Because um, I'm just like, I, I already kind of bought, but all of my profits that I make on like random meme coins, things like that, I just rotate it all back into Pulse. And um, all of my, you know, basically everything. I, if it's on Ethereum, if I make profit, I'll rotate it into Ethereum or Phantom. And then if it's on a uh, Pulse, I'll just rotate straight into um, straight into Pulse or maybe Pulse X. But I already got a lot of Pulse X, like. Uh, but yeah, Pulse is is a good one. So uh, I, it could be a while, but I, I still think that Pulse is going to run later than everything else anyway. So yeah. you'll see Bitcoin and all of that go first, and then Pulse will run off the back of that. Um, so just you know, when when Bitcoin hits its top, it might not be the best time to sell Pulse because it's like Hex ran for ages after Bitcoin uh, topped out last cycle. So well, I mean, a good few months at least. Yeah, below previous all time highs, the only real action to take is buying. You know, like that's yeah. where you're going to make the most money. So like, um, it, like, yeah, I, I agree with you a hundred percent. Like it's going to do that, but I'm just like, man, can we just not get a few extra people in here with, you know, with bags to like, uh, get us going a little bit early because if we're in all time highs, when money starts flowing into all coins and we get our crazy alt season and 25 is freaking insane, you know, if we can get a head start to that, a bit and are at all time highs at that point, the number of X's you can do is insanely higher. Mm -hmm. You know, so like that's why I want to, you know, just be like, hey, you know, it's really the community, the people who are here, you know, it's like, hey, I got no more money to, to DCA. Well, I got a job, <laughs> you know, and it's like I, I can I can put more money into the market. I think there's not enough, <clears throat> what do you call it, people out there telling people in this community like how to like dca at good times and now's a great time right like the last time we had this much fud in pulse chain was uh back at the end of november beginning of the beginning of december and i i it made me think a lot and then i was just like well buy more you know and like the and price has been up ever since right and we're still up you know so like um yeah it's just that's, like, that's what i wanted to ask too that's what I want to ask you guys too. Is it, you know, I like the way somebody, somebody takes a, this angle of, is it cheap or expensive? Is, you know, the core coins, uh, Pulse Chain, Pulse, like all the stuff we saw, you know, dumping recently, are they cheap or expensive right now? They're what cheap. About it? Very cheap. Yeah. Very, Seems very like easy call. It's like buying, like, I don't know, like a busted up car that needs to be refurbished or whatever. And then like, it's going to turn into a Lambo by the end of the bull market, you know, like, you spend, you know, $2,500 on a car that has a good engine, but you have to work it up or whatever. And then that $2,500 car is going to turn into a freaking like Huracan or whatever type of Lambo you like, you know, whatever color, whatever interior, you know, like. I haven't picked the color out yet. I've been, been holding back, but uh, I'm thinking about <laughs> green as of now, thinking that. There you go. There you go. <laughs> to be <laughs> fair, guys, I have just spotted, um, if you put that chart on, um, on log, Max, yeah, and you see that there is actually uh, maybe put it on the three day chart as well. There's a there's a trend line from the very bottom going up, and on on log it's like a perfect trend line, and we actually just wicked to that trend line, and now we're bouncing off it. Um, oh, it's kind of hard to see on that, but yeah, it's like a perfect yeah. trend line. 
Um, so yeah, actually, you know, maybe, maybe it does make, maybe we're all just in depression or, uh, maybe it's the, uh, <laughs> well, what's, what's the part of the cheat sheet where it, it starts coming back and everyone's like, oh, it's still not going to happen. You know, like I, 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 I'm never, in, I'm never in depression, but you know, every once in a while you got to poke fun out. You're like, you know what? Why, why not? Let's my body's ready. I, I want to soak yeah. this in. Let's do it. Let's do it. I know. I know we're going to be back. Let's do it. That's what happened. What, what is, what is that called? I don't know what that's called, but that, that's what I feel. I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna bring up the Wall Street cheat sheet because that there's a specific um yeah yeah um, phase of that right yeah it's uh what it is is the um Re relentless second. rational optimism let's go and go with that one <laughs> it's 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 the uh, disbelief that's that's it sorry that is disbelief we're in disbelief right now on on pulse it's like we've took mm -hmm. one big dip here and we're like yeah man we're just I, t I knew it weren't gonna go up yeah like oh we're so stupid it's like it's going from depression to disbelief and i believe we have been through depression i've seen some like some serious bottom signals in the hex and pulse chain community serious yeah. ones i don't even want to name names i'll tell you guys after the stream but like <laughs> seriously i've seen just some of the worst most obvious bottom signals ever and um i've got certain people in the community that i'm looking at as a top indicator as well when there's like certain guys that are getting euphoric i'm like just gonna sell everything 100 uh, yeah. percent. is that a chart we can trade on that <laughs> <laughs> Set this, the hex community the sentiment chart like <laughs> i've literally I actually funny enough i did talk to crispy about uh making like a, a hex sentiment uh chart and i think it would this is like I don't know, a, a while back but the idea would be it would uh group together like different sentiment indicators and be like how is hex feeling right now like what is the feeling yeah. overall and it would be like a smiley face or a frowny face or a awkward face that kind of thing we talked about that you oh, know it's, really it's been a sad face for a long time <laughs> <It's> yeah. <laughs> yeah. it'd be like what levels levels of tier just one tier or like <laughs> But like, no, that you'd actually be able to fork. You could just like go to the uh, what was it, the fear greed index on Bitcoin, just because yeah. they have a like a mix between social markers and different things through Twitter and all that, or whatever that you could like kind of just like copy whatever system they got going. Because I think it explains even on the website like how they do it. But um, yeah, just copy that and then just like meme it up and like get a coin on it. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Well, speaking of, uh, yeah, it's always nice to see uh, Richard tweet about other coins when when things are red. And uh, speaking of that, I think he just probably just went through and picked a couple of the, you know, the the uh, pulse chain versions of the coins that were doing well. Uh, apparently, WBTC, and then it would just it did some crazy green candle afterwards, uh, of course, and then uh, PDI as well. So he talked about, you know, do you have this free coin worth that much? Did you check? Um, these, so there's, you know, at least those two that he mentioned. What do you guys think? about you know the coins that have been copied over and stuff will they just be forever meme versions of it like or is there a narrative i know pdi you know there's different narratives of pdi and stuff too with bitcoin like the rap version all these things is it just you know, are we going from meme territory to actual narrative that has some kind of thing do we just need people to build on them like how do these things you know why do they have so much value now is it just purely narrative based like how easy is it for their tech to fork over That'd be that my could first be one. one. I mean, yeah. I mean, just any of these, like, these two. I mean, you got a stable coin and wrap Bitcoin with this one, but maybe there's other, you know, uh, projects and stuff. They see their coins have value. Well, yeah, let's just think. Like, let's think, for example, like because I think the biggest um, benefit for them is advertising, right? Because the community in Hex and Pulse Chain is just massive, um, devoted, loyal, you know, uh, everything. And then the, if they like your project, they become soldiers for you, right? So. Like, let's say there's some project that's just like very, very simple tech, you know, has like a couple functions and then you just copy that over because, hey, why not? These guys make more money. We tell them, hey, take 25% of the money you make on your token that's currently, you know, worthless or, or meme coin or whatever. By you just coming over here and giving it social value, you know, you basically give it some value. You take that value maybe a quarter of it, bring it back over to your own community, use that for airdrops, giving stuff to your community, whatever, get them excited about Pulse Chain. They start coming over, dabbling with your coin, bada bing, bada boom, you know, you got you got a community that's now, you got like a, what do you call it, merger between two communities. And that's kind of like, <clears throat> I think what needs to happen with like simple projects. I can't think of a project offhand that would be easy to kind of bring over and start using like that to actually, you know, Cause I don't want things to be memes on Pulse Chain. I want real projects that do shit, you know, 
or a mixture thereof, like what Hexy Bassers got going on, right? You got like actual stuff that's useful, right? Versus, you know, um, you know, if you just create, you know, Costco hot dog coin, I mean, it's fun, it's hilarious, but it's got to be bigger than dollar fifty. It better be dollar <laughs> fifty. <laughs> exactly. It'll be exactly. Like st stable to the price of a Costco hot dog. <laughs> exactly. It better not move. I'm only paying a dollar fifty for those hot dogs forever. Okay. I, I want to sell them at, at like as much as possible. <laughs> just bring that shit to the mood. But it, it's like you know, I, I want stuff that has at least some utility, right? Because if it has utility, then it has stickiness. Means just basically bring the locusts, bring the people who want to come pump and dump, and then take their money off chain, go bring it somewhere else. You know. I I personally think that like they're always gonna like the actual tokens that exist now like pdi and things like that they're all just going to be memes the only way that they, even if uh the die um guys want to come over they're just going to launch a new version of it here they're not gonna, that's true that's true you know um it doesn't mean that these things can't pump and people can't make a lot of money out of them i mean i would love to see some of these prc20s get bonded but it, intrinsically there is no value there so You're right you don't need to bet like yeah i think the narrative of like do they have value for that community when they come over or whatever is like not even something worth debating because you're 100 right it's not going to they'll just bring their own stuff but like we want them to bring we want them to rug those things yeah. sell it for pulse and then you know um build their own projects because we need more development here you know we need more more uh more narratives more exciting things because like I, the pulse chain and hex community will get bullish like at the drop of a hat all we need is just a couple good good uh you know news days right like a couple sunny days instead of just torrential rain and hurricanes but <laughs> <laughs> absolutely we need, the, we need the meme of the wind you know 100 mile an hour hurricane wind blowing the reporter and it's got like you know richard's face on it or something or like to represent <laughs> everything yeah i could see that yeah the, it feels like go ahead uh, i was just gonna say the, the, the thing is is that like with um with the with pulse chain what it needs is it needs one or two coins to just pop off like yeah maybe meme coins whatever i mean we we kind of started seeing this with solid x um when when um one of one of the guys in our community launched solid x and it's the uh he was the eighth largest pulse chain sacrificer and he was the number one sacrificer for nine inch and the number one sacrificer for two folks and, and a few other things so he's like a huge gigantic whale right but he launched the token and because of the um, because people trusted it so much that it would do well because it had a guy like that behind it it just moonshot at twenty two thousand x in like like a few days literally it was it was on the top page of deck screener for every every token okay. in the world every token in the world it was on the top page for like days and uh nine inch and it had the eggplant next to it as well which I thought <laughs> was quite cool um but yeah and then and then the nine inch ended up as a result of that because of the amount of volume we ended up being um yesterday we had like 60 percent of the volume that pool sex had yesterday which is just crazy considering the amount of liquidity on uh, Pool Sex is something like $140 million of liquidity or something like that, right? We've got maybe 25 or 20. Um, I'm, I'm not sure. But like the amount of volume that we had yesterday and the, and the last few days is crazy. And it's because of basically one coin that came along and just re breathed, a, uh, breathed life into the whole ecosystem, the whole of Pulse Chain. So what we had as a result of one random meme coin token was we had free advertising all day, every day on Dex Tools and Dex Screener, which is great. We just need a few of those to like really pop off and keep and keep going. And what we need to do is we need to be advertising this to the guys of like that are using Solana and Base and all of that. Show them that there is another place where they can make like shit mad gains. And um, you know, yeah. I, I know guys that made millions out of that Solid X thing, and I'm really, really happy for them. It's it's amazing. Uh, good on them. But that's why people are in crypto. We all know a guy who knows a guy who got really rich off Dogecoin or something random, you know, shit coin anew or bloody baby Doge or fucking Shiba, anything like this. Yeah that is what people most people are here for memes most people are here to make money really really fast they don't have this long-term mindset like we do they they want to come they want to put 500 dollars in and become a millionaire within an hour that's yeah, what they yeah. all want well and that but that gets them addicted right and then they yeah. come back <laughs> especially as well like when, when say they get like really close on one say they, like they go in on a coin and it does do like a 30x or something but then maybe they don't sell because they get greedy but now they're hooked for life it's yeah. like taking crack or something <laughs> they're just they're hooked now they're like oh my god it's definitely possible and now most of these guys i'm not gonna lie they're not gonna make it i mean there's a lot of guys in um we we've got a telegram called coin hub it's t.me forward slash 
uh, forward slash coin hub underscore nine inch. That's like the DGEN central for Pulse Chain. So all the DGENs in Pulse Chain need to go there because we, we called Solid X at like $2 and it went to like nearly $300 uh, a couple of days later. All of the all of the DGEN stuff on Pulse Chain is in coin hub. And I would, if you are averse to all of that, now I know RH Max is. Um, general crowd probably aren't going to be on it but if you are uh you know not opposed to a shit coin here and there then a uh, coin hub is the place to be but um, you, have, you have to have you have to have a little bit of everything right like you can't be yeah. in crypto and not shit coin at all like you know find a little couch cushion money and you know buy that lot yeah. <laughs> and for some lunch I... money in guys lunch that's another one i i like i i i went in fucking hard on lunch money right and it's just it's just been grinding sideways <laughs> i think you heard it here from me i think lunch is going to be one of the best performing assets Dude, on the nine inch ecosystem i actually I, like that idea it's not like it's for me all meme coin needs to be is like as soon as i hear it do i think it's kind of funny interesting you know do i think other people would kind of get it like without thinking because yep. the meme coin is not supposed to be smart, right? So it's just like, oh, dude, that's like perfect idea. Like, yeah, yeah, just chuck some lunch money in and don't jeet it. That's yeah. literally the the consensus. Don't I fucking like it. jeet it. <laughs> like, that's it. Yeah. So uh, I mean, yeah. definitely, I definitely want to see Pulse Chain go to the moon. But also, I think I I think 95 percent core, five to ten percent lottery. I, I don't I don't see a lot of problem with that. People and it's like is I just don't want I, I don't I don't want to see people get addicted to okay. Yeah, ten percent. Oh, but this coin's moving. Oh, but now, now, and they're now you got ninety percent in this random stuff. You yeah, just bought from ten percent of like, oh, well, but also they don't go up a thousand x. My core coins will go up a thousand x, and it's it's okay if I lose the rest of it. Like that kind of thing is this, this is why yeah. yeah. risk management. <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah, just like uh, I think people in crypto they hate hearing the subject of risk management, but it's like, okay, I'm gonna take this medicine, and either you're going to, you know take this you know a bit uh day by day or at some point i just got to give you an enema with this because like people need <laughs> to hear it like people need to hear it because like uh, there's a lot i mean it's it's kind of like an ignorant bliss bliss right there's not a lot of people who um like when they come into crypto it's their first investment class and they're just here for the quick gains so you know it's like hey here's like a couple things that'll not only like make you money but also make you not lose money which isn't that fantastic <laughs> not only make you money but it'll make you money like yes right yeah. <laughs> um a little bit of positive stuff here too i, I saw this from uh shout to martin storyteller 17 the capitulation event we saw on pls now hit a blue support line uh, you might have noticed in rh's screenshots yeah remember you, you do the screenshots and you leave all kinds of room up here and people are speculating on that too but this blue trend line uh, yeah, you guys were talking about that. Was it in Pulse or Pulse X earlier? You're saying it hit. Yeah, uh, it right. was the Pulse one. Yeah, it's the one. Okay. Yeah, it's the same one. That's that I just happened to spot like as I was looking at the chart because I was thinking, oh, the, the inverted head and shoulders has been like ruined, but actually it's still just bouncing off the trend line. So yeah, that's yeah, actually that's, quite quite cool. Yeah, it's not a bad accumulation pattern if that were to hold, right? Like a, and you'd want to watch it hold like on a weekly basis, not a daily basis, because you know you can get wicks and stuff intra intra week, but like. If it if it holds on to that, um, yeah, I'm down with that. Smart I'm guy. Down with number go up. <laughs> number go up, even if it's just I, a little bit. You know, just I, like just stop dubbing. <laughs> I, I'm down for up only. Uh, please, please up only. Please, yeah. the, nice. the thing as well is, um, I know, I know it sucks if you uh, sacrifice a small amount for pool chain and you're down at the moment. But you got to bear in mind, man. There's a lot of whales that got in at like a two x multiplier, so they're actually still in quite a bit of profit yeah. right now. So th th we're shaking those guys out slowly. It's, it, it was like a billion dollars that got raised, man. So we just got to bear that in mind. It was like a billion dollars of value that came into that thing. You need to shake those guys out. I mean, we, we even had it with uh, with Nine Inch and with Poor Pleb, like. Poor Pleb did 1.4 million, Nine Inch did 16. And even with that, it was like massive shakeout on launch straight away. It had to be. And um, it takes it takes time. It takes time to get them out, man. I'd be really interested to see like that original, <clears throat> you know, there was that, I forget which web page it was, but the original list, <clears throat> excuse me, God damn it. The original list of like everybody, like every wallet that had sacrificed for PulseX. It'd be interesting to get that list together again and then after you got that list together, make it like a second column right next to it. How much percentage of that wallet is still holding, mm. you know, their coins that, uh, or at least hasn't sold via that wallet, right? If they transferred coins, that's whatever, right? But have they sold via that wallet? That'd be interesting to see because then you could see like, okay, you know, which which whales are your benevolent whales and which ones are the ones that you're like, 
good to get rid of, you know, because uh, yeah. then they, then you know which wallets will be interesting to watch down the line too. If we, if the ones that have held that don't get, you know, fudded out or, or, you know, just shaken out or whatever, or just like believe the community long-term, hmm, what else are they betting on? What else have they bought, you know, within the ecosystem once the ecosystem starts building, you know, more, of course. If you if you get the data, I mean, that's actually a great use of AI too, because if you're able to do data, I've been digging into different ways to do data analysis and, and a lot of different uh, data sets. And if you're able to get that data, like I'm pretty sure there's an AI tool that can be able to put it together and just ask a question. Hey, show me the trends. Show me the people who did this. Show me all this stuff. Right. Um, yeah, great use of AI uh, tech. And well, I want, yeah, that's actually very, very interesting because like, on-chain data is so difficult and uh, you need a lot of people to do it and they need to be like doing it like all the freaking time. Could you train AI to do on-chain data? Like I know there are protocols like that on Ethereum being built right now, but like, I wonder if it's like, you could even make like just a, like a, a, a bastardized version of that. Just something that's like really easy, you know, that's just like an Excel sheet, but like tracking all the, these specific wallets, like at least top hundred wallets or something like that. I bet yeah. you, you probably could. You get, I don't know. Yeah. I can't think of any on top of my head that get access to the blockchain to do that, but I know I'm just definitely coming. You just have There's that a product market fit for that. Yeah. I mean, basically you need an API to get access to the data that's been indexed from the blockchain would be like one way to do it on the infrastructure side. I mean, that's uh, it's either can be a plugin or they may just be a service platform that does it sometime. Part of the problem is that we don't really have a good block explorer. Um, I mean, we've, we've got yeah, decent true. ones, but they're so slow. Like even, even the good ones are very slow. And from what time were they like accurate? Cause I know like when the chain first came out, there was like some of the activity wasn't, I don't, don't even think showed up. So like, um, like is it, I, I haven't even looked, you know, but like, is it like still like, uh, like, is it now on all transactions or is it still very opaque? <sighs> May I blows my mind even thinking about it. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's a, yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. We, I mean, in theory, it should all be there, but it's, it's quite hard to, um, to backtrack it all, I suppose. Cause I'm still interested in exactly what happened with the, um, you know, the vampire attack thing that, um, Richard and his team did to like drain all the liquidity pools out and stuff like that. Like, mm -hmm. I'm still curious what exactly happened the with that. AMM fixer bot. Yes. Shout out to AMM fixer bot. What's that? That was what it's called. That was the uh, the bot that was going to go and uh, scoop the liquidity from all the chains and fix the ratios and do all that stuff. Yeah, I don't. I, I don't even thought about it for a long time. That was uh, maybe it's part of a bigger plan to pump this thing to the moon. From well, I mean, in theory, if um, if he's if he's taken all of the coins that were existing, like all the PRC twenties that existed, um, and he's got them in some kind of a vault somewhere or something like that, shouldn't that make the chain a lot more bullish? Because a lot of the supply for the, some of these PRC twenties just doesn't exist anymore. Yeah, that's a good actually, um, re maybe related to that. I think I saw that the Brat Bitcoin supply is only like 150k. It's not 21 million. As such as the fake Bitcoin, it is the uh, the uh, rap Bitcoin. I think I heard some of your some of your some me or somebody say this 150 um, 150k. I think on the rap Bitcoin deal, oh, and somebody can fact check that. Yeah, I was gonna say, how did they figure that out? I think you can just count them probably with I mean with the block support or some tool. You can just count the the supply of like what's okay. actually available because it's just when you when it's wrapped, it's it's minting the token. Right. So it's just uh, there should be a supply count somewhere or see, I don't know. So to Hexy's point, I don't know if that's actually if a lot of that got scooped up or otherwise with the ratio stuff or if that's just like what supply was left over because that's how much was minted on Ethereum. I'm not sure. Hmm. Kind of want to go with the former, though, or, the, or sorry, the latter. I was clicking on I was looking at the sacrifice stuff. This can't be right, though. This is 13 billion. It's because it, it takes into account the the. Um the transfer that the OA did. Oh, okay. To get 92% so. of the supply. <laughs> that's another thing as well. That's part of the problem of like onboarding, like, I don't know, exchanges or new people is when, when someone, when an entity has 90 plus percent of the supply, that's very off putting for these, for these new guys coming in. Interesting. Yeah. 55 billion here. Well, I think, I mean, I think the whole, you kind of got to believe in benevolent wells in order to be in the ecosystem in the first place. Like that's like step one. Cause once you find out 
that, hey, there's there's whales with big supplies locked up that, you know, are, again, you kind of got to believe it's going to do benevolent things. Otherwise, you're, you're going to just be like, oh, I don't like that. But then you're going to look at other ecosystems that have huge wells too and and think, oh, are they transparent? Or, I think there's, you know, a lot of arguments there too. But definitely it, it turns a lot of people off for sure. Yeah. I mean, but I mean, you can make the same argument about Bitcoin as well. Like what if Satoshi's wallet comes comes exactly. along one day or like someone finds their private keys and they've got like fucking 10,000 Bitcoins sitting there or whatever. Like it's, yeah, it's, it's not, you, you can have that problem with every, every currency, but with, with this, it is 90%. It's quite a lot. So I don't know. Uh, if, if I'm going to trust uh, anyone, if I have to trust anyone with any any type of making any kind of uh, positive or not negative moves on the chain, I think instead of trusting like Solana, VC founders and like, uh, you know, everything else locked up, I'm going to be like, Vitalik. Yeah, guy, yeah, <laughs> yeah, Vitalik who, you know, I don't know, I guess maybe he sells when the top sometimes, maybe he's a good trader, maybe not, I, I don't know, but I'd rather trust the guy. He Sonic makes the fucking him. top, bro. Like, I don't even know if he's a good trader. He just makes the top. Right. Like, <laughs> it's like, it's like for some reason, like, it's like always after Bitcoin, <laughs> you know, it's like who in Bitcoin is talking to Vitalik as well? Because I think they're coordinated between the two. Cause like, yeah. Well, Vitalik has a lot of Bitcoin as well. He, he True. took Bitcoin for the pre sale for Ethereum. So, um, you know, he he probably sells Ethereum and buys Bitcoin with it. <laughs> like Satoshi is actually Vitalik's granddad. <laughs> <laughs> I did hear a rumor it's, that it was like a Russian government thing or something. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it's all Putin. It's all Putin. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Putin owns all uh, the Bitcoin guys. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I made this post. Uh, I made this post about a week or so ago. But I was I was trying to think about you know looking back. Let's let's say you know Hex does really well. And, and all this stuff, uh, you know, things aren't the way they feel now in the ecosystem and, you know, all the, all those things. I was thinking, what would actually a timeline look like? Somebody looking in 2026, 2027, 2028, if they look back and this thing, you know, succeeded, glory, all that stuff. What would that look like year by year too? And I'm curious, I want to get you guys' take on this too. I just kind of went through the past four years, like launch, sideways or, you know, up. You know, somebody pointed out up. I'm like, yeah, I know it's up, but it wasn't up, up, like, like you know, afterwards. And then so price up, price down, migration, I guess. I don't know. I mean, that's whatever. I'm not going to get into that. But and then in 2024, price went up a little bit. Don't know. Uh, don't know yet. Again, this is not a timeline of what I think. It's just kind of like, I wonder if we look back, would this make sense of a timeline that would happen? Value uh, store value near restored 2026. We don't quite. Uh, uh, what do you guys let think? Me, let me send you something. There, there's a guy way back in the day uh called must stop murad who had actually a chart on how money uh how something becomes money over time let me see if i can find you that uh yeah i'd love to see that but is it bullish this is, bullish? is, this is uh, i want to see if it's bullish we're in bullish mode right now okay? <laughs> don't allow uh don't allow yeah. bearish content on this channel yes yeah, right. <laughs> no, 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 no there was there was a stream that minutes. actually said that to me once like uh, someone invited me on, I'm not going to even name the name, but like someone invited me on their show. And uh, this was around the time when Hex was going down uh, from, you know, I think it was at about 15 cents coming down and uh, called me up. Yeah. Do you want to come on the stream this weekend? I was like, sure. Sure. Um, so what do you think about the price? Do you think we're going to start going up now? And I was like, not really, bro. I think we need to hit at least seven and a half, eight cents somewhere in that region. And then, and then we'll start going up. And he was like, oh, I don't think I can have you on the channel then because uh, we only like talking about bullish stuff. And I was like, so essentially you're lying to your viewers. You're just filling them up with hopium. Like it was very obvious that we were going to go down 85% at least, right? So I don't even know why that seemed like a weird thing to say. Like Richard talks about this all the time. 85% dips are in the game. Right. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> like, why, why would yeah. you only go down 70? It doesn't make any sense. Yeah, no, I think I think both, I really like to be, a, you know, of course we're all biased in a certain way, but I really like to take an objective approach and then let people be like, oh, I think this is bullish. I think this is bearish. And just, because it's, I think both sides can be interesting. Like you can, it's not like you can only trade the bullish side, you can trade the downside too. So like, mm. why not? Why not? Like, wouldn't you want to know? Wouldn't you want to be informed or, or at least like get a perspective and stuff too? So that's funny. Yeah. I'm only saying let's, let's, if I was joking, if it's bullish because we spent, we spent just having fun and, and basking in the red candles for a moment. I'm like, you know what? Anything, anything cool happening for Hex? I feel like Hex need to shout out for a minute. So anyways, I, 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 I pulled this up. Uh, you want to talk about Charlie? Oh yeah. Yeah. So just like, I guess in terms of like how things start off, right? Like 
digital collectible, like to get to like store of value, Bitcoin's just not even fully there yet, technically. Like, I think it's, I mean, it pretty much is, uh, but like, uh, yeah, like it's interesting to kind of like, uh, cause like I'm looking at it on your screen, I guess, like if I pull it up on where I had it, um, like for example, like at the time that this came out, this was in 2017 when this chart came out and they basically, it was right after that section that says proving that the system's hard to change, reliable, um, and perceived no perceived protocol risk. And then you just basically get to more decentralization and, and you grow your network and it's basically all about network creation, um, or whatever, but we're in the, uh, you know, we got digital scarcity. That's good. Right. But then, you know, you got to just get it to a fun digital collectible for nerds, uh, and cypherpunks, you know, that level first, you know, in, in the first bull market, you know, just something that people want to engage with, um, and then have fun engaging with it. And then when they engage with it, you know, do they sell drugs with it? Do they, you know, like I'm talking about self growth, not about Pulse Chain. Of course, nothing like that would ever come out on Pulse Chain, but, um, I'm talking about utility. <laughs> <laughs> I, it, it was a utility right in the early days of crypto early so days. it's it's um but you need some some exchange of value for something right and uh, but some like and that's why nfts are interesting too right like i think the stuff that you know uh once we get into real bull market territory the stuff that's going on with mintra will actually help add to that narrative as well that just is like hey it's another thing that can get people interested in this chain but yeah getting to store value and medium of exchange and anything like that, I think would take quite a while. But so this, I mean, was 20, it, this is 2018. And so you think, where do you think we are now with Bitcoin? So this, this is, you know, I think it's becoming six, a store of value. Later. It's becoming a store of value because of what BlackRock has done right now. We have Michael Saylor who is using it as a store of value, right? He's never selling, right? It's up only. <laughs> and like, that narrative is now taking hold because we got we all got in before Wall Street, right? We are the smart money on Pulse Chain right now. So who are we getting in before? Who else can we attract to this this community? You know? Yeah. Um, but who will come, right? Build it and they will come. But so we built it. <laughs> we built it. We sort of maybe migrated some of the capital and stuff to Pulse Chain. And then we want price go up. Yeah, I think the store narrative value, uh, store value narrative, I I, ho I really do hope it gets fully restored with people. And I think Hex has just been beat down so much, and just not not a lot of fair stuff. It's not like it. I feel like Hex is like, it's this like really cool thing, and then Pulse Chain launches like, you know what? We need to split buying pressure now. You know what? We need to migrate. You know what? We need some drama. Like there's all this like things that just keeps getting punched and punched and punched, and it still works great and it still works fine. People are building on it and just all these derivatives and I'm excited for Icosahedron coming out uh, this year too, the version two as well. But it's just like, it's one of those things like why I think it's unreasonable that it wouldn't succeed. It is unreasonable yeah. that it won't go back to glory. <clears throat> That's what I think about it. Yeah, for sure. Hex is a fantastic idea. And uh, like the, the whole staking mechanism and stuff like that. The, the only thing, the only thorn in the side now is just that it, like, there aren't many charts that have gone down 99% and recovered. I mean, I know we moved over to a network. Hey, we have a new chart. Okay. We fixed it. We fixed yeah, it. We have a yeah. New chart. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. Exactly. Wrapped, wrapped a bandaid around it. It's fine. Well, uh, but about. that that is true. Right. <laughs> it's like, uh, we're after like time heals all wounds, you know, and there's going to like, there's a certain, there's a lot of people in Hex and Pulse Chain right now. Don't, they don't know bull markets, right? They've only they've been forged by the bear, right? And um, they don't know anything about the original history of Hex. And so, in three years, you know, after, or a year and a half, you know, a lot of people won't even remember where you know the stuff we're talking about right now. That's true. That's a great point. That's a great point. I was actually thinking about that today. Of you know, there's so many. You know, if you've been here the last couple of years, you know, and you haven't left. Uh, then it's kind of like, I think there'll be so many new, again, if everything goes well, glory happens, all that stuff. There'll be so many new people that come in and replace a lot of the people who left. And for whatever reason, I don't judge anyone. You totally, I totally get it. You want to stay here? Cool. You don't want to stay here? Cool. Like I totally get it either way. But there'll be so many new people that come in and replace those people that don't have all that pain, all that package, all that, uh, you know, they didn't see a lot of this stuff happen. They just see, hey, this is a product that, you know, works for me in whatever way. Oh, I see a lot of other products I like on Pulse Chain, uh, you know, and start putting their money uh, where they want to put it. So 
I think that's to me that's kind of a bullish thing for for Hex and for Pulse Chain in general is that once we get the new people to come in, they they can have this. And unfortunately, you know, a lot of people have been here. They they maybe didn't make the right choices or trades or, or judgment or hold on or didn't hold on or all that stuff for a while. But the new people, they give a new a fresh a fresh uh, release of new people to come in, new streamers, new everything, new capital, uh, of course, but like new. You know, it, this place will, I think in a, in a year, in, in 18 months, it'll be like, wow, there's like a lot of people I never met before who are here now and they're yeah. doing cool stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And, and like, um, <clears throat> I don't know. I think some of the old people come back to at that point. Right. Yeah. You, you, you'll get a resurgence of like old, I mean, it kind of happened with like Dumpfer, right? Like he, he left and then came back and now he's like <laughs> a hex maxi. He went and tried to scam a load of people with a load of stuff. And now he's, now he's like a devout hex maxi. I think I'm actually blocked by him on Twitter because I haven't seen anything <laughs> from that guy in a long time, but I used to really like that guy as well. But yeah, man, he, he turned out to be a bit of a piece of shit. I'm not going to lie. Anyway, uh, I'm actually just looking at the um, e hex chart now. Interestingly, it's up five X from the bottom. Hmm. and and uh you know what like it's doing the biggest like shooting star on the on the weekly right now and here's, here's something i want people to remember about hex right so imagine richard hart comes back starts streaming again and gets really really popular suddenly what are people going to go buy they're gonna buy hex on ethereum or maybe pulse on ethereum possibly they, they might buy that but i think they're gonna buy hex on ethereum it's the easiest thing to buy for the new guys that don't want to swap networks and don't want to do anything like complicated mm. so uh yeah i um it's actually I, I, mean, I, I i like ehex i i i think uh, i know it's a bit broken with the staking how dare you <laughs> it's a bit broken with the staking i mean i know guys that are paying like 700 dollars to end a stake that's not even worth 700 dollars. i'm just like why bother mate just buy just let it bleed out and just buy like there's, there's no point um yeah, just, just just on that real quick too does the math work out? i haven't like went into different strategies but always when i hear pe people say oh just let it bleed out and die my first instinct is but what if the price goes up so have you guys like ran the numbers on different ways of like is it actually better just to i guess the gas fee make is a big factor in this but like what is the point where you should just let it bleed and just buy on on market if you believe it's going to go back up versus saving I, it and then getting it question is it running good accounting does that use the same amount of gas as ending the stake or is it less i think it's this I think it's the same. Yeah, as far as I'm okay, sure. right. So that's that's not an option then. I mean, it, look if the if the price is around the price that is going to cost you to end the stake, then probably you should just end the stake because especially now where we're at, like we're at the bottom, right? So um, it probably is a good a good time to do it. However, if you were kind of edging towards the top of the market, then maybe it's not a good idea. I mean, yeah. I, I really don't know. Yeah, it depends on like kind of what type of money it is for you, right? If it's if it is like lunch money or couch cushion money or whatever, just sitting there then basically what you would do with that is um hold like forget about it you know but don't forget about it totally just like come back in eight years you know and uh hopefully hopefully gas is fixed by then but you know it's, it's like one of those things where it's like you know back in the day like there's a really good um documentary called the rise and rise of bitcoin and it's hilarious because you see like guys like uh brian armstrong you know he looks like dr evil now to some extent but, or, <laughs> like, sort of to brian armstrong actually yeah yeah like some please, sort of please list paul on coinbase mate right but like he <laughs> he uh i mean he's he's a he's a smart motherfucker but oh, like oh, he he uh back then in the documentary is just some like nerd you know in the corner at some conference right and so before he was a billionaire and all that stuff but um you watch that and you just kind of see like it just reminds you of like where we're at right now. We're in the days of like when, you know, somebody would, uh, you know, take their laptop and mine some Bitcoin while they barbecue and then, you know, forget about it for a few cycles, come back and, you know, take out a few million dollars, you know? Um, and if it goes to shit and goes to zero, you know, well, it was couch cushion month, mon uh, it was couch cushion money anyways. So like, you know, uh, I don't know. It's one of those plays where it's just like, if the money doesn't matter to you, just leave it there and then come, come back next cycle. Yeah. See if it's worth anything. If it's not, well, then you took your, your other money and you bought more of pulse chain and PX and, and ink and whatever, you know? So, um, yeah. yeah. I mean, it seems like so far the market has decided that EHEX has liquidity and it's still being traded and people, some people like it. A lot of the value went to pulse chain. It's pretty simple. Richard was like, 
I'm not supporting <laughs> Ethereum stuff, and that's it. There's no OA, you know, cell walls put up. I I still think that that was some kind of weird 4D chess move. I think it was, you know, because like um, maybe for the final capitulation, just get just get guys out, make the dip even harder, make people think it really is dead, and then maybe later he's gonna moonshot it. I I don't know. I don't know, man. But like, I can't imagine that he actually would let it die on Ethereum. It doesn't seem no, to make sense. No, I, I, I yeah, because it, it, it's part of like, it's like you had a baby, you cloned it, and then it's like you kill the original one, you know? Like, <laughs> <laughs> Richard out here killing babies. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, no, Richard, no. Great, great oh. segue away from that. Uh, you guys come to New York? October? I think that'd be fun as hell, bro, in October. Yes. Why? What was happening? Uh, everybody's going about? in and, and uh, oh, the thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I think uh, with money game. I, I think you I'm gonna come. Coming, right. I'm gonna come. Yeah. Fuck it. You I'll bring come. money game too. Bring... You bring his strong shoulders. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he can give me a piggyback up the stairs. <laughs> uh, we're gonna have we're gonna have like sub sub eating meatball sub eating contest. We're gonna have arm wrestling. Uh, and also right we're gonna the... like go with support stuff. And no, not in the courtroom. <laughs> No, I don't think so. I'm not planning that. Yeah, but uh, well, yeah, like, I mean, no, it, it would be it would be really interesting, wouldn't it? Like, uh, we had about I think it was like uh, set sixty or seventy or maybe a, up to a hundred people. I can't remember how many people showed up for the movie, um, but we have a picture basically uh, of like one of the biggest, highest of stakes turnouts, you know, uh, that we had here in Vegas last August, and like just imagine like a hundred hexagons like in a courtroom. And like during that movie, it was interesting because like people would like make little comments or like we'd all laugh at the same time or whatever. And if you just get like a group of people in the courtroom and like you just hear something blatantly wrong from like a lawyer on the opposition side that like clearly they don't understand what blockchain is and everybody just starts laughing at his ass. Like shit like that would be fantastic, bro. Because like when you look at some of the arguments being made against it and stuff that people are trying to put out there, like they clearly don't even under barely even understand what blockchain is. Oh, that it, yeah, I encourage everyone to read the 69 page, 69 page. Interesting. Uh, deal. It, yeah. Yeah. I wonder how that came about. <laughs> amazing, amazing. Like I went through it uh, the other day with nuclear herbs and it's just like, we just went through like the first one. They had 12 pages just on the jurisdiction issue. It's like who spends 12 pages? Like you must have so many, so many uh, like references and sources aside of previous case law and all these like, you know, fail, SEC fails to mention this, fails to prove this, fails to do this, fail, 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 fail over and over and over. Man, yep. I got I got super bullish on that. After I saw, oh, I can't like that. That's a that's a piece of art. I mean, we need to frame that somewhere well, uh, once we and, win a case. And when you look at Richard Hart's argument with freedom of speech and what blockchain actually is, I mean, you, you can't argue against it. I mean, Andreas Antonopoulos is talking about the same shit since you know 2015. So, um, yeah, like no I, boot I think, babes, man. I think Richard, no boot babes. <laughs> I think Richard's just he's he's just gonna like kick ass like he's just gonna win like i, I mm, like it's hard to I, imagine I mean, him not winning like, on this one i mean even if yeah. even if he doesn't win the worst thing that's gonna happen is he's gonna get like a fine right and then right exactly then which is a, also a win in my opinion it's like hey get a slap on the wrist but whatever but him adding that um that <laughs> blockchain text thing where you can like upload books to the blockchain and stuff like right. that this thing here yeah yeah, yeah, this this is quite a clever move, actually, uh, in, including this in. So, yeah, yeah, you kind of you kind of have to think of all governments like the Chinese Con Chinese Communist Party. It's like, how can you make something so decentralized that you know, no matter how much they try to censor you, they can't censor you. Well, uh, doesn't Pulse Chain have like millions of validators now? Yeah, super Literally. decentralized. I mean, it might, it might, in theory, but it might not be that decentralized. Uh, I think Dave Fido. Well, you, you know what I mean. <laughs> like, I mean, in, it no, depends no, no. on what you consider decentralization. Yeah. No, there <laughs> actually have some. I have some. Uh, I can I can talk to that one for a minute. So if you scroll down, the one with I mean, yeah, validatorstore.com. This is just again, from my understanding, this is not David Feeder running all the validators. It is just you know he's I think he does have services where he runs them for people in the cloud and stuff. But from what I understand, if people are using his script or his uh, you know instructions to set up their own validator, it'll yeah. automatically make the graffiti validator store.com just as a hey, this you know this was used my tool or whatever. People can take that out; they can leave it in whatever. For my script, for example, I don't have anything for graffiti, so like people using my script, yeah, it very well may they may very well me 
thousands of validators using my script, but it's just not on here because I didn't put any graffiti because I don't, I don't, I, don't, I just didn't want to, just didn't want to put any in there. So it's not that he himself is owning 20%, you know, 60% of the network. It's just people either using his services or using his script, which could, so it could be, it literally could be like he could own 5% or something like we, we don't know. But like yeah. it's not. So, I would not take that. I don't take those numbers seriously as far as like centralization goes. I'll say. Well, that. Yeah, <laughs> fair. I, I was just messing about anyway. I, I'm actually curious about this um, with the validators. Like, how much money are people making off the validators? I did a whole thread on that, um, and I have 77 videos for you, sir. If you go to learn to validators, <laughs> 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 just, just a quick 77, <laughs> 77 videos. No, no. I've answered deal. every question you could possibly think of. <laughs> um, I did have a thread on that. Uh, it's, it's based down. on the current prices. It's based on how many validators you run. It's based on if you use the cloud, if you're renting a server, buy one. There's a bunch of different variables. But essentially right now, it's, it's I mean, with cur Pulse's current prices, it's not, you need a lot of validators to be profitable as of today with the current prices. But if Pulse price goes up, I mean, it's just like a matter of time before it's not only profitable, but you're also locking up that PLS because right now, if you go to Go Pulse. You see, it, take, it takes about $2,500 to, to start a validator around there. It takes about 30, 32 million PLS, so around $2,500 current rate. So that later, if Pulse does a 10X, be $24,000. It could be $240,000. So like if you're gonna be a validator and you wanna you know, run your own hardware or do it in the cloud or whatever, if you if you'd start now or get the PLS now versus doing it later, a lot of people are gonna be priced out they start doing it later. So that's like one secret sauce validator thing of like, okay, it takes pulse to do it. You better have some uh, pulse now or accumulate it if you want to do it later on. If, even if you're, you know, not planning on doing it now, if you don't think it's profitable or or whatever. But uh, to me, it's well, it's not. I mean, you are securing the network. It does go with the narrative of I'm 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 proud to help secure the network. I'm proud to, to publish free speech blockchain stuff. I'm, I'm it's like it's like to me, it's a community service if nothing else. And then hopefully the price goes to the moon. And I'll be like. What do you mean not profitable? Super profitable. You just had to hang in there. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I, I always do like seeing those types of maps on different networks when you actually see like, oh, there's people in just the most random parts of the world, you know, being validators. And it's like beautiful, you know, just like because that's like goes with this because that like helps with the jurisdiction issue. Right. You know, uh, to some extent, it's just like this is uh, something that's free for the people we all sacrifice for it. you know we this is our freedom of speech you know using tech still, still early in africa there's no validators in africa <laughs> <laughs> Somebody go to gambia no <laughs> shout out to uh, antarctica we gotta get those scientists to start validating but there's nothing there, there, we've got south africa right south africa's on the map we're good we, yeah. we have we have two there's two guys that i met it's at the africa. false chain conference with that was uh what may of last year in the uh during the bitcoin conference thing in miami they're, they're i think they were in kenya if, if i wasn't mistaken if we uh be like hey bros oh, so this uh, map may be even more bullish i like that it's like hey okay. bros just turn turn it on you know like get yeah. get them a validator or something so um, we can have that one in africa <laughs> if we get if we get 50 people from 50 different countries showing up in the courtroom being respectful and nice and be like stop fudding my bags uh that'd be pretty cool be well pretty if cool. it's like they're from all over the world or whatever it's just like one of these things where um yeah you like that's what like everybody kind of like i mean we are in it we're in it for the tech right like but at the same time you do have to have the tech to to back it up you know yeah yeah in it for the tech and the price performance that's the rallying call of uh people who like to be free a lot of people i don't know man there's a lot of people who are like ah i don't uh I like free speech. They're here for free and they're here for loving crypto. And then, they, then they're, as soon as somebody says something they don't agree with or like whatever, no, no, you there censored. No, not you. I meant me, not you. It's like, yeah. uh, man, it's, it's like people crazy. saying that I should have my channel removed and shit like that. It's like, shut up. You pleb. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. Well, I, yeah, I every, like everybody, everybody, like, I've, it's, like we need, you know, as many different voices of this community as possible. And like, um, it was Hayden Adams the other day um who was saying like hey we're all in this together and it's like well everybody says this in crypto and you know when they want people to be behind them <laughs> you know but it's like it's like one of these things where it's like if we did like because like if uh what do you call it the court cases at some level between like you know uh richard hart uh hayden adams with everything if like there was some level there where like all these court cases start kind of like bleeding together in terms of precedent and stuff 
like that's good for all of crypto. So like, you know, uh, I don't know. I think what Richard's doing is like a lot of stuff that will end up being good for other things in crypto and people aren't going to realize it till later. Like, um, f- fun fact, uh, I mean, <laughs> Aiden Adams, founder of Uniswap, has me blocked on Twitter okay. and I've never interacted you do? with him. I've yeah. never interacted with him. Uh, th- not that Isn't I can weird? remember. Isn't it's it weird? Crazy. Like you never talk to somebody, but you're like, I, I think somebody, I, I'm blocked by somebody. I forget who it was, but I don't think I've ever even talked to him or I didn't even know. And then you, then you see like a retweet and it says, can't be viewed. I'm like, why? Yeah. I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, I, anyways. Hmm. So by weird. the way, but, uh, Matty Allen, if you happen to be listening, you've got K9, one of the nine inch founders <laughs> blocked on Twitter for some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> do people just like, just block. I haven't blocked one person ever. Like oh, I, 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 I'm quite hot with the block button these days. If, oh, okay. if people are like fudding underneath my threads, like the, what, right. the thing is, what, what I'll do is people get one chance. Like if a guy calls me a scammer, I'll call him an idiot. And then if he just persistently calls me a scammer, like every thread, then I'm just like, yeah, just block him. Gotcha. It's always people that have like no followers as well. It's like, yes. it's, it's angry little broke guys with no friends <laughs> and hardly any money. The, they're the loudest, but then the guy, yep. the whales with a lot of money, even if they, you don't know, they man. don't like, you just don't even. Well, you know what? You know what I like. Is I, I like when they cry like a little babies. You know, there and then the rest of the community just like looks at it, and then you get like five or ten other people just like basically being like, "Stop being a bitch," <laughs> you know, pretty much. Yeah. Like, you know, that's the those are the funniest comments to me because like most people in the community realize who those people are and don't listen to them. You know. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, man. It's, it's it is it is weird. It like I've noticed this in our chats that it's always the guys that sacrificed like I don't know a hundred bucks or less that are the biggest crybabies. But then you've got like the top wallets. They're just like they're like, hey, well done, man. I'm loving this. Like I don't care if I'm down. It's it's good. Like I'm, I'm enjoying yeah. myself. I'm enjoying the ride. Like you know, it's a completely different uh, mindset. Like the poorer you are, the more angry you are. I guess there's some correlation there, or. What? Yeah, like, like people's value on money is different, right? So like when you're when like if you're like, okay, this is gonna be my last hope, and then your last hope is dashed, it's like yeah. I mean, I feel for those bros sometimes, but like at the same time, it's just like go get a job, go get a life, right? Like go go do something to get more, right? Like they took her jabs. Yeah. Hashtag AI. <laughs> they took a job. <laughs> they took AI and take other people's jobs, right? Whatever you need to do. Fair, fair, fair. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Just, I, I think there's an abundance versus scarcity mindset is what it comes down to, you know? Yeah. Um, there's too many people in this world that are taught to have scarcity mindsets because, oh, money is hard to get, you know? No, there's infinite money out there. Fiat currency is, the, you know, literally infinite. So just go find a way to make some, right? Okay. I, I, they don't like infinite. Go that. find a way to make some. That That's actually... That yeah, resonates pretty well. Like people that. don't like to hear that though, because people are like, "Well, easy for you guys to say, you know, <laughs> you know all this." Shit. You already like, did that and made it. Like, yeah, because that you what? Know, you it's always your people like me, like grinded and suffered and yeah, <laughs> like made that, it happen. A, like that, the people that people are just jealous, man. It's it's, yeah, it's, it's, like, it's always crazy when I see people like hating on billionaires and stuff. And I'm like, oh, that's to me, that's inspirational. Like, yeah, I want, right. I want to be like that. I would like to have that much money. Like, I would like, I know what to do to get it too. And it's like, instead of hating on billionaires, like, oh, they're all evil. How about we create better billionaires, better millionaires? Let's create more good people to do good things in the world that are rich. Why not that? Why, why is that not mo- the most productive thing you could possibly do? Well, well, and also, right, like there's so many people out there who um, maybe don't have the ability, the time or whatever to be, you know, to become rich, right? And it's like, okay, because they're in like day-to-day situations, right? They're fighting for their lives month on month, paycheck to paycheck, whatever. I get that. Um, but you know, I don't know, just like grind a little bit, you know, uh, try a little bit harder, like get into crypto a little bit extra. It's like add to your knowledge base, right? Like, I don't think people like, you know, the old phrase, knowledge is power. Like it's so corny and all that, but it's like, it's so true. It's just like every, I think Elon Musk even said this the other day, like right now, everybody has, uh, or virtually everybody in, at least in first world countries has access to more information than the richest people on earth did back in let's say the 70s or 80s right and like what are we doing with it you know like people are just wasting their time wasting their lives right it's like go use those people as inspiration go and go and do something right and it's like i don't know um 
it's that it's also that consumer mindset versus producer mindset or creator mindset, right? The more you try to create, the less, the more likely you are to to make it. If you're just a if you're just a consumer, like you know, yeah, you're not gonna, you're just gonna spend money. Right, right now it is super easy to get rich. Like you're in the right time, the right time, the right place. I mean, it doesn't even have to be like pulse chain. Just crypto in general, right now, if you're in and you're constantly buying and then as long as you like know what you're doing enough to know when to sell that's the hard bit because right. um you you're gonna see people that make crazy money on the way up and then they just start getting greedy and that's why i i like the idea of just dcaing out like once you hit certain price points just sell a bit sell a bit here sell a bit here 10 percent, 20 percent, whatever you're never gonna feel bad selling like a little bit early like i actually um a few weeks ago pepe uh, obviously pumped like crazy, right? And I, I bought in like right around the local low. So I was like, and I forgot I had it. It was like weeks, maybe even a couple of months I had it. Um, completely forgot about it. <clears throat> Seen Pepe all time high on on um, Twitter, went and had a look and I was like, yeah, yeah well, this is going to continue continue going. So I waited a couple of days and then the value of what I put in just got bloody ridiculous. Like, <laughs> I was just like, oh my God, this is nuts, right? I'm selling half, sold half of it two days later it doubled again so i had more than doubled again so i had even more then than i than i had like two days previously when right. i sold half there was a part of me that was like kicking myself like man i could have had even more money but then i was like no 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 secured the bag secured it made sure that i took profit and well, then let it, the rest ride yeah and if you do that throughout the bull market like let's say like because that's like just an example right so then like that that bag you have left then all of a sudden goes crazy again and it's like then yep. you shave off another it's it's a literally a money tree that you prune right don't chop down the whole cherry tree right yeah, like, never sell everything never sell yeah. everything it's, it's stupid like um i mean if i'm totally convinced that something has topped out and it's definitely going to retrace a lot then i might sell 90 percent. that's kind of right. the most i'll ever sell on something um but uh yeah it's it's um yeah it's one of them things just, just by the way, wrapping up here too, I wanted to tell people that, you know, if you've been there, we're talking about the different copies on Pulse Chain and everything on Ethereum last year, you got copied over and those trading and some have huge markets and all that stuff too. If you go to Go World DeFi, learn to earn, or just go to gopulse.com too, but I got a link here at learn to earn under airdrop. You click airdrop, it'll take you go pulse start and you can put in your address, connect your wallet, whatever. It can tell you what you have. I actually put in some Ethereum Wells addresses the other day and I was like, whoa, there's like somebody has like a ton of, you know, copied over, maybe it's die and a ton of wrapped Ethereum. And it was actually worth hundreds or thousands of dollars. So it's actually a very underrated thing. I don't know why I feel like we, I, mean, I can never tell people this enough. If you had assets on Ethereum, they're on Pulse Chain now and some of them have a market as what we talked about earlier. So just want to make sure we get yeah. that in for people too. So, yeah, absolutely, man. That's a, it's a great tool that. It's a great tool. Um, I, I think you might be wrapping up actually anyway, but um, I actually have to go, I'm afraid, boys. Yeah, I've yes. got something I need to uh I've go gotta to. go too. I've got to go before you, okay? I was here, I was thinking yeah. about it first. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I was thinking rugged. No. <laughs> uh, and Charlie he already left. He, this is just another guy. This is AI Charlie. Yeah. This is my AI. Uh, I, yeah, just yeah. keep it going. It's really good. It's stuff really good. So yeah, before we wrap up real quick, guys. Um, what do you guys think? Bitcoin, Bitcoin having is everything waiting for that? Do we pump afterwards? What do you guys think? Just a couple minutes on that. Honestly, I, th I think it might already be a bit priced in personally. Yeah. But, what do you uh, mean? Yeah. Like, because the pump the pump has come and like, I feel like actually we might dump after the halvening. It might just wreck everyone. Like, no, not eternally, yeah. you know, but just a big retrace after the halvening personally. Yeah. The, the interesting thing about where price is at right now with Bitcoin is that uh, to mint one Bitcoin or to mine one Bitcoin right now, like um, for miner costs on average, I think 63 or $64,000. And Bitcoin's been having a hell of a hard time dumping below that price. So I wonder what Wall Street is looking at, because I agree. I think uh, that early to mid-May, like late April, early mid-May, that like three-week period there, that's going to probably be the best time to DCA, like the first half of May. And then counter trade Wall Street, right? Don't sell in May and go away. Buy in May, go away for a month, come back in august and then look at mad gains and then degen into whatever you want to take profits into and uh, make more money going into the fall you know but like i don't know wall street is kind of an interesting uh beast because back in i think it was i have to go look at the chart but maybe it was early this year or late last year i forget when but there was a point where like bitcoin should have been dumping but it just wasn't i'm just like yeah because wall street's buying so i think 
we might dump less than a lot of people think, but I think I agree we will have like a good dip buying opportunity. But this is the year, right? This is the year where price go up altcoins. We're gonna have a rally. Yeah, from June to well, June, July to uh sometime in Q4, I think. Okay. You're not canceled anymore. I like that. That was that was a good bullish thing to go out on. Yes. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm extremely bullish after like uh, there's uh, I did a thing on liquidity cycles last Thursday or Wednesday, I think one of those two streams. Um, if people go back and watch that. Um, the other thing that's really bullish, a lot of people are talking about, oh, we might early top this cycle on Bitcoin because Wall Street's in it. We're getting too high, too fast and all this thing. But if you look at the liquidity cycle, which also matches the four year cycle, because uh, basically Bitcoin came out during the financial crisis, which happened to be a low point. Um, the liquidity cycle goes through uh, the second half of 2025, which would either lead to a, a extended bull market into 25, like everybody should expect with the four year cycle, or um, what do you call it? Uh, a double top cycle like 2013, where we top sometime late this year and then we go down. Everybody says it's over. We buy back again. We go up one more time uh, and then glory, glory, glory going into sometime between August and November of next year for for uh, the end of the market. But that's just my theory. I don't know. I don't know nothing. <laughs> uh, so, so some version of that comes through. We 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 like we don't like we made too many poor people. Okay. There's too many poor people. Got it. Gotta be rich or richer. I like, I like those choices. Rich or richer. Let's let's do that. Right. Or well, Richard. Choose or richer. Rich. <laughs> we're about the word richer, richer. We now say glory, the the glory word for rich is now Richard. Boom. Shout out to Richard Hart, by the way. Um, gents, where can uh, start with Hexy first? Where can people find out more about you, your products, and all your stuff, man? Just uh, Hexy Bastard on Twitter, Nine Inch IO, and go go and use. One thing I didn't mention on this stream is the launch pad. The launch pad is popping off, man. We've had mm -hmm. uh, Solid X was launched on the launch pad. Uh, basically, means you can create a coin in about ten seconds with about ten cents less than maybe less than a yeah. penny and you can launch a coin and then you can um allow people to stake bbc to earn your coin so it gives you free users and you get and you can go talk about it in coin hub um if you are a dgen of any capacity join coin hub it's t.me forward slash coin hub underscore nine inch just get yourself in there we're having voice chats every night uh there's a lot of random dgen coins like i said solid Dex, we we had that in that um coin hub chat when it was less than two dollars and it went to 280 odd dollars. So you could have easily made a hundred X on that one. If you were in, um, if you were in that voice chat, uh, not even the voice chat, just, just in the, in the chat room in general. So yeah, just follow me on Twitter if you haven't already and make sure you use nine inch. We are clearly the second biggest decks on a uh, pulse chain now. So, uh, yeah, let's, let's rock. Wow. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, yeah, you can just go over to cultivate crypto on YouTube. Uh, I stream there, uh, Tuesday through Friday. Today we're doing our stream. I think in about two hours, something like that. So um, go and watch. Uh, we're going to be doing our uh, casual Friday, going through charts and look at all the all the red candles we can buy into here. What's good? What's what's worth it? What's not? Um, and then uh, yeah, me and uh, Dollar Cost Crypto we do Moon Gang every Sunday. So uh, come over to uh, Cultivate Crypto on YouTube on Sunday at uh, 7 p.m. Pacific, 10 p.m. Eastern, and uh, you know join the Moon Gang, have a good time, you know, chill, have a drink. Uh, smoke some weed, whatever the hell you do on your Sunday nights. And uh, yeah, talk some crypto and uh, make some money. Shout out yeah. DCC. Love you, man. Fucking yeah. legend. Shout out DCC. <laughs> yeah. Glad we could warm you both up. Sound like Charlie's got another stream coming up and Hexy's maybe got a bed warmed up. I'm not sure. Uh, <laughs> yeah. but great, great to have you both back on. And uh, yeah, hopefully it's not the last time. Great stream, gentlemen. Appreciate yeah. You. Thanks. Thanks for having us on, man. Much appreciated. Of course. That's all we got for you today. Sci-Vibe and five vibe and five. We're out. <laughs>